So here we are, day one, Mobile World Congress, and this is the day that all the companies make their biggest announcements. So here I am on the General Motors stand talking to Paul Peebles. Paul, tell us what the big announcement is you've got coming up today from General Motors. We're announcing our partnership between AT&T, OnStar, and General Motors. Um, global announcement to offer 4G LTE connectivity starting next year across all of our brands, um, starting in the U.S. and Canada, uh, Buick, Chevrolet, GMC, and Cadillac. Uh, and we're going to be the automaker with the most 4G-enabled vehicles out there. So what does this mean for GM? From a connectivity perspective, OnStar has actually been connected to vehicles for 17 years, so this is the next big step for all of us um, to be able to put that high bandwidth connectivity into the vehicle. It's going to enable a whole set of new services that were not possible before, between the Wi-Fi hotspot in the vehicle that's going to allow people in the back seat with their devices to stream video into their, into their uh, tablets, to even video in the backseat. So again, this is really uh, a game changer from our perspective. So one of the big issues in this business is things like network neutrality and openness. Can you tell me your position on that? Yeah, so from our, from our perspective, the openness of the system, uh, we announced uh, our developer platform just a couple months ago, developer at gm.com, and we're gonna allow anybody who wants to develop an app to work in that framework. Of course, through that process, we gotta make sure that we're watching out for our customer, that these apps work seamlessly, they work well, and it's the right content. So um, it's going to be open for anybody to develop apps, but the final approval, the final um, launch of those services, the apps, there will be an approval process to make sure that those are the best things for our customers. So it's a, it's, it's a little bit of both. It's open for anybody to develop, but only the best apps are going to be allowed in the vehicle. I know this is a difficult question at this stage, but can you tell me about what sort of applications you envisage being used on your vehicles? Yeah, so the, the applications that we're doing right now, and, and an example would be TuneIn, um, so iHeartRadio. So there are apps that are currently developed and are being put into vehicles, um, and that's on our current 2G, 3G type solutions. Um, starting next year, when we've got the 4G LTE connected to the vehicle, now that I can stream content into there, the apps are going to get far more powerful than they are today. What about life cycles? A car lasts about 10 years. Can your radio last that long? The exciting part about us putting this embedded into the vehicle and the fact that, um, and the fact that the, we've got an app framework, we're really divorcing the vehicle development cycles from the app development cycles. So the apps we may have in the car right now, five years from now, they could be entirely different. And all you have to do is just download, download the latest version. So um, from our perspective, this really decouples the consumer electronics space from the vehicle development cycle. What's next in this field for GM? Um, from what's coming next is, this is really the pipes, this is the plumbing, this is the stuff that's going to make it all work. So uh, I, over the next year or so, you're going to hear a lot more about what are those apps, what are those services, and again, this is just the beginning. We'll be continuing to evolve and add new content even after the vehicles have been manufactured. Paul Peebles, General Motors, thank you very much.